the name of the Lord, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, with the grace of the Almighty God, we got to the end of the Holy Friday. We lamented with the disciples, the apostles of the Lord. We lamented with the beer, the mirth bearing, bearing woman. And we heard this beautiful chant of the lamentation. Thinking about this and trying to travel in time 2,000 years ago. The sun were afraid but the things that the Jewish did to the Son of God, the physical Son, hid his light because he could not take, he, he could not see all of the things that they have done to the, their Creator, to the Son of God. The earth was shaken. And everything that happened, happened for, for a reason. And even though they were sitting and seeing all of this, seeing the earthquake, the sun hiding his light, becoming dark in the middle of the day, Didn't, didn't they see anything? Did they understand anything? How could they continue with this life? Let's admit that at first they didn't understand. But after seeing all these signs, they still did not understand? And we can say to them that the devil with their own lips was crying, crucify him. And we, my dear ones, living in the 21st century, in the century of technology, we think that everything can be done with one button. Just hit the button, hit enter, and that's it. No. In order to gain life eternal, to gain salvation, we have to work hard. <coughs> and we can actually take example, example from the athletes. Can that button works, work for them to grow muscles, to make you faster, to make you stronger, to lift up the, the, the weight? You can hit that button as long as you want. It's not going to work. You have to work out in order to grow that muscles. So the same thing in the spiritual field. In order to make this happen, we have to work through repentance. We have to work through good deeds, through love ultimately, because God is love. And he created everything out of love and built everything on the foundation of his own love. So only through love we can gain, gain life eternal. Where are all of those that throughout the ages, because they did not cry out only then, crucify him, but throughout the ages, 21st, 20, 21st century, 2,000 years, they are crying out, crucify him. We, we are in our times, we took him out from the society. We took him out from the schools, from everywhere. We don't need him anymore because we want, as the prodigal son, to live a dissolute life, a life according to our likeness, not a life that matches with his commandments, 
matches with his teaching, with his sacrifice. And that's why all these atheists and other groups are fighting against him because they do not accept him. And you think with his sacrifice on the cross, the things got better? No. Look at all the saints. The majority of them, pretty much over 80%, were stoned, crucified, sank, or buried, burned alive, buried alive, and so many other things. <clears throat> and thinking that we live in a modern time, look what is happening today in the Middle East. Still, people are persecuted and crucified alive, <clears throat> alive because of somebody's ego. Look what is happening today in Ukraine because of somebody's ego. See, everything we're trying to feed our ego. We're not trying to listen to the word of God. We're not trying to follow the word of God. Of God. We're not trying to accept his sacrifice on the cross. What we're trying, we're trying to, keep, to put him on the side and just leave us alone. As many of our families have disagreement with their sons and daughters. You know, mom or dad, leave me alone. I'm old enough, I know what I'm doing, you know. So and we're not different. In our relationship with God, we are doing exactly the same thing. Even though if we're not saying anything, sometimes we're not saying, sometimes we're even cursing and blaspheming. Sometimes we're just doing whatever we want, silently. So, and the question is, are we the sons and daughters of the Most High God? According to our actions, if each one of us will address this question to, to himself, so are we better than those that were crying out, crucify him, his blood on us and on our children? Are we doing anything different from them? These are some question that we have to reflect. When we leave from here, after this beautiful service, we have to understand why we were here and what we are doing here. He put on the cross everything. He, praised the, he, he paid the most expensive price. For what? For our salvation. For us to become better, to follow him, to imitate him, to be like him. And what we're doing today. We're completely off of track. We lost our roots. It's like cutting off, chopping off the branch from the tree is going to bear fruits? No. So the, th the same thing are happen it, it will happen to us. Those that are saying, oh, I believe in God, but I don't need the church, I don't need the priest, I, I don't believe in him. Nobody asks you to believe in the priest. You believe in God, and the priest believing in God too. You know? But he had arranged everything with a purpose, with a reason. And he said, who does not have the church for, as a mother, he cannot have God as a father. So then, what will the, those that are saying that they don't need the church in order to be saved? They are saved on their own. How? Because the church is providing us all these mysteries. You can silently pray at home, but you cannot be saved. If, as I said it many times, if one of us will be found in the middle of the ocean, no boat, no nothing, 
can you, with your own strength, to swim to the shore? No. How much can our body take? Couple hours. Even you're, if you're very strong and you swim for a couple hours. But take in consideration also the dangers that are there. It's not only the waves, waves but sharks and other animals that are every day in the, in the sea. So would be that person able to make it? No. But if we are in the ship, which is the church, then we are protected from all those attacks from outside. You see, the serpent has put his traps everywhere. But out of love for us and out of care for us, the Lord established his church, paying this price of his own life for us to give us this ability to receive the mysteries, to receive salvation through the church. And this is what we are doing today. This is what we did today. We lamented for the price that he gave because we know that resurrection without crucifixion could not be, could not take place. And this is what he was trying to tell and teach his disciples. And this is what we also have to understand. And we today are partakers of this great sacrifice, great event for all of us. We received the blessing of the apostles. We received the blessing of the mirth bearing women. Of course, we know after they saw the earthquake and everything that took place, some of the people standing by, they were beating their chests. But the others, they continued this big lie, even though they saw what happened and with the within the temple. And what they, instead of repenting and asking for forgiveness, what they did, they paid the guards to say that the apostles stole his body. So now let's be honest. A handful of men will go against the Roman army? Come on. Who would be so crazy to go against with pretty much we can say naked, without any weapons, without anything, without any experience. Go against to the most powerful soldiers of that time. So ju just let's, uh, let us reflect on that. But you see the day trespassed every limit. Because once they became murderers, so they could not stop themselves. They could not control themselves. So and this is what is happening. Once you open the door for the evil forces, they are not stopping. They are getting you entirely, and you're pretty much become, becoming willingly a slave. Because this is what they did. They willingly crucified him, saying his blood on us, on our children. So they curse themselves with a curse. That's why they were scattered throughout the world. And even now, they will be restored only when they will repent and accept Him as the Savior, as the Son of God. So, and we, those that are baptized in the name of the Holy Trinity, we have to understand this much better and be awake spiritually and, and to realize what we are doing. 
and to be prepared at all times, as we know that he will come in the middle of the night. This is what we chanted in the beginning of this week. The bridegroom is coming in the middle of the night. So knowing that, that means that we have to be awake at all times and prepared at all times, ready no matter what. We're looking, oh, what is happening in the world? Is going, there is going to be the third world war. There is going to be shortage of food. What we're going to do? What we're going to wear? What we're going to eat? And so many other things. But are we questioning how we're going to repent? Are we going to find a priest to have communion, to have the confession? We are not asking these questions. We are trying to do everything and now it stands in our hands to prepare food, to prepare whatever um, refuge, underground, and whatever other stuff we're preparing. But are we preparing spiritual refuge? We care less about that. So, see, ultimately we still care about the body, but not about the soul. But the body is earth and, and dust, ashes. We have to emphasize on the soul, on the salvation of our soul. This is the important thing that we have to take care. So let us take it literally and start working, start a new beginning each day, leaving us the last day, because we don't know if we'll make it to the next one. That's why we have to live today for like being, it's my last day on earth, and I have to prepare to get ready to be with God and to answer to him as a good servant, as a good steward, what did I do with the talents and the gifts he granted me? So let us reflect on all of this and prepare for the Feast of Feasts to celebrate with the Trinial God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and all, all His saints. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you.